Hi everyone, it's me Crystal. Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. If not, welcome for the very first time to my little art corner here on YouTube. Today we're going to be playing around with the items that came in this month's Palletful Packs box, which is for September 2020. I'm going to be doing two projects today, one on the Yupo paper, and the second will be on the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. Right now we are doing the one on the Yupo paper. Right now I'm just using an ebony pencil to get my sketch in. I had never used the Yupo paper before and it was a very interesting experience for me. It is unlike any other paper I have used for watercolor or ink media like this. It's a lot more like a bristle board. The ink itself seems to just sit on top. It takes a really long time to dry, even with a hairdryer. I found it taking a while. I also found the application itself to be very streaky. I couldn't get a smooth blend to save my life for it. We're not even there yet, but I'm telling you all about all of the fun I had with this paper. And it's funny because I got really fussy with the sketch on this one when I really didn't need to. A lot of these shapes and everything end up changing because of how the ink ends up applying. I tried starting with applying the ultramarine pink. This is my least favorite color that we got in the Taylor Rowney Aquafine watercolor inks. It's really chalky looking and it's very translucent. As you can see here, it is very, very streaky on this paper. I decided to go over it with the red we got because the red is a little bit more opaque and even that is applying pretty streakily here. Every application I did on this paper was just incredibly uneven. And even if I did let it dry and go over it again, it didn't seem to even it out any. My plan switched to basically using the red as the baseline, using yellow for the highlights, and using the blue for the deeper parts. At this point, I am pulling in a hairdryer and kind of letting the ink flow as it may. I did like the splatter effect I got on the corner of the head there, the back of it. I do think this kind of paper would be really great for drip paintings and some other abstract art like that. I also found myself wanting a smaller brush since the papers they gave us are so tiny. Having another brush in here that was just like a little tiny detail brush would have been really helpful. Some white and black ink to mix in with the colors we got would have been great. I would have much preferred either one of those colors to the ultramarine pink we got. I know for sure with the white, the red, and the blue, we could have made a similar color ourselves. I did attempt to get some line work in using the dark blue with this one, and it just was not working very well for me. I do try to cheat a little bit later and pull in some black markers. First I tried a fine liner in a blue color. That didn't want to apply on this paper with the ink already on there. Then I tried a black fine liner. That also didn't want to apply, so I ended up using a Kiritake Zig. I don't know exactly what kind it is because it's all in Japanese, but it is a smaller brush tip and I was able to get lines with that later. I also wanted my highlights to be the very bright yellow. I wanted this to feel very hot and warm color-wise. Just molten reds, yellows, and then blues for the shadows. I did contemplate not posting this project because I do end up being very unhappy with the outcome in case you can't tell, but I think it is important to show the same inks on two different papers and see how differently they respond. Sometimes paper choice can make a huge difference in the look of your final project. Also, we all make some projects we aren't as proud of sometimes. That is a very normal part of the process, and usually you just gotta start again or give up on it for a while. And even though I didn't like working with this paper and I hated how the project ended up, I did learn a lot about what I can and cannot do on this paper. I cannot do a lot of layering at the same time. I have to wait a very long time in order for it to dry. I can peel it back up with a sharp pointy tip or the end of the brush. Or with a marker or with a pen. I do still think these inks will be good for pulling in for projects into Inktober if I want to do something that has a little bit of color in it. I had a jar of the red already from a previous box and I know I definitely used it last year for a few projects. And here I finally do bring in that Kiritake Zig marker. 
I decided that because the project is so small that I definitely needed some line work in order to make it more visible because before this it was all kind of blending together. I did notice in certain spots that this marker was pulling up the previous layers that were already on there and to me those layers already felt dry. So that was an interesting little thing to have happen that I wasn't quite expecting. And I'm sure there are people who love this paper and can do amazing things on this paper. We all have our different preferences with art supplies. With how I work, this paper just wasn't cooperating with how I usually do stuff. And I might try again another time and see if I can apply what I have learned and possibly look into more things to figure out how to use this paper better. And here we have the second project. This one took way less time, probably because I kind of already knew what I was trying to do. And my camera did give out for part of it, so I do apologize for that. So you can see, drawing another woman in profile, starting with the red this time, I decided to completely ignore the pink color we got, because it just wasn't working with what I wanted. So we got the red down. I'm going in with the ultramarine blue for the deeper parts and creating shadows. And as you can see already, the blend is a lot better on this paper than it was the other paper. It seems to layer a lot more easily on the cold press. That's probably partially because it dries more quickly on this paper. And I was also able to do some other techniques other than just trying to blend it all while it was wet. And my layers after it's dry aren't re-pulling the previous layers back up, which makes it a little bit easier for me to work. I'm also pulling in the yellow for the highlights like I did with the previous project, and I'm allowing them to blend in a little bit more with the red. I also reapply red over to create some more mid-tones. Even before pulling in the black marker again, I was able to get much crisper, more defined lines, and get some beautiful blending going on. And if I make a mistake, while it's still wet, I can always grab a piece of paper towel, napkin, or cloth and wipe it up off the paper. I did like how this project ends up turning out a lot better than the other one we showed in this video. I think it's mostly because I already knew what I was doing, but also this is the way I would normally apply watercolor or ink onto a normal watercolor paper, so it's a way I'm already used to working. At this point, I start pulling in that Kiritake black marker again, and this is just to help me further define the lines I already have going on. It did bleed a little bit into the background that I have set up. That part was apparently not completely dry, but I am able to fix it slightly by going back over with the red again and kind of covering up the bleed spots. I also end up pulling in some yellow into the back of the hair over the blue to create some highlights and I use the same pencil I used for the sketch which is an ebony one to help bring in a little bit of shading that way. Overall I think this was an interesting experiment to see how the same kind of supplies can work on two different papers and how completely different they can look because of that paper choice. Here we have them right next to each other so you can get a better idea of how the blends are different. but. With that, this video and this project are pretty much done. If you liked it, please hit that like button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, concerns, or you've used any of the items that came in this month's box, you have any tips, advice, let me know all of that information in that comment section down below. I look forward to hearing from you. If you want to see more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe. I do palette full packs, unboxings, and projects once a month. Although for October, it will probably just be an unboxing and I will pull in those items into Inktober projects later. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day or night to watch this video and listen to me ramble. I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to hearing from you guys soon and you'll definitely be hearing from me soon. Bye everybody!